if we have an account, um, bank account or uh, some other type of account that's gaining interest and it's compound interest, it turns out that's an exponential function. <clears throat> um, here's, here's the formula. Um, in an account, with principal P, principal is just the amount you start with, that is compounded, or that has a rate, R, compounded in times per year, okay, so what that means is, <clears throat> If it's compounded four times per year quarterly, that means that at the end of the first quarter, interest is calculated on that for that uh, principal for that amount that you have. Interest is added, and then you go to the second quarter, you take whatever you had plus the interest, and you get interest on that. So you get interest on the interest that you not only on the amount you have, but you get it on the interest. And then the third quarter, it does that again. It gets interest on everything up to that point. So that's why it's compound interest. You're getting interest not only on the amount you start with, but on the interest that you get. Compound interest. Simple interest, you're just getting interest on what you start with. Compound interest, you get interest on the amount that, that you gained also. So anyway, uh, <clears throat> turns out, if that's uh, the setup, then after <clears throat> t years, the amount in the account <clears throat> is yes, a equals p times parentheses one plus r over n close parentheses, so you take the rate divided by n, the number of times per year, compound it, and then raise that to the nt power, and that's, <clears throat> and that's what makes this uh, an exponential function, because basically most of the time we're thinking the variable is the time, and so notice the time is an exponent, is in the exponent of our uh, little formula here, but that's, that's our compound interest uh, formula if we're compounding n times per year, okay? Okay, so let's take a couple of uh, looks at an example here. All right, <clears throat> so let's, how much is in an account with $5,000? has a rate of 8% compounded, let's do quarterly, <clears throat> all right, uh, number one, after, let's say five years, how much is in the account? So after five years, how much is in this account? Well, <clears throat> uh, basically this particular exercise is labeling and plugging in some numbers, right? The $5,000, that's the amount we start with, so that's our principal called P. Uh, the rate is 8%, of course, change that over to decimal. R is 8%, but uh, in our decimal form, Move it two places to the uh, left, right? So 0.08. <laughs> then n, what is n? n is the number of times compounded per year. So if it's compounded quarterly, that's four times per year. So n equals four here. And of course, in this particular case, the time, time is in years, and so 
be careful with that. Sometimes they give it in months, so uh, change it over to years to go in this formula. So T equals 5 here. So we've got A equals P, so it's 5,000, times 1 plus R, R is 0 0.08, divided by N, which is 4. And you raise that to the NT, so that'd be N is 4 times T is 5. That's going to be the 20th power. What I recommend is go ahead and uh, simplify this in here. 0.08 divided by 4, that's 0.02. 1 plus 0.02, so that'd be 1.02. And then that's to the 20th power. So that's going to give us... that in, $7,429.74. I don't know where you're getting 8%. <laughs> like in... 8%? I'm just, I'm just joking. At oh, the bank. okay. <laughs> oh, yeah. Interest rate. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. At a, uh, it, like I said, it could be at a bank, could be uh, fa factoring, Good figuring it on a... Uh, yeah, on a stock... Your stocks might give you a little better exchange yeah. on that. <laughs> All right. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, it, uh, so how much do we have after 20 years? So that'd be A equals 5,000 times 1 plus 0.08 divided by 4 again. And we're going to raise that to the uh, 4 now times 20, so the 80th power. So it's 5,000, 1.02 to the 80th power, which gives us So yeah, it uh, it goes up pretty pretty quickly. I mean, the, this is just putting in some money and uh, letting it grow for 20 years compared to five years there. So yeah, so with the compound interest, it grows grows pretty nicely there, and with the better rates, of course. <laughs> All right. Um, <clears throat> now, what I would say is on these, the one thing that changes, of course, is uh, the compounding, the number of compounding. Um, <clears throat> let me just mention here without going through, through a whole other problem. All right, so if it's uh, compounded monthly, that's n changes n to what? Well, there's 12 months a year, so that'd be n equals 12. Uh, Semi-annually, semi, yeah. half, two years, I mean, two, twice a year, n equals two, yeah. So if it says semi-annually, n equals two. I think the way, there's different uh, institutions do it differently, but uh, if it says daily, I don't know if we have a daily one in the homework, but they do use the uh, 365, <coughs> n equals 365. So those are the, annually, of course, would just be n equals 1. Um, I think those are the main ones that, that they have us uh, do on these assignments here. Okay? Now, there is another formula, though. <clears throat> so this is if, yeah, if you're compounding quarterly, monthly, semi-annually, daily. Well, it turns out there's, there's a limit to uh, this interest that you can compound. And... Uh, it comes in a different formula here, and that's with continuous compound. Yeah, so daily, that's a that's pretty frequent compounding, um, and if you get daily compounding, that they probably take it, but uh, but even better would be 
uh, hourly, uh, by the minute. But like I was saying, that there is a limit to this, and that's this continuous compounding. What that the idea is that's compounding instantaneously, and so that that is the limit to to the compound you can have. Good news is the formula for it actually simplifies a little bit. <clears throat> The formula for continuous compounding, so if uh, P is compounded continuously at rate R for T years, all right, so it's Compounded continuously, you still got the rate R, T years, <clears throat> then the amount is given by this. A equals P times E to the R, T power. So it's not a long formula, I call it PERT. It's the PERT formula. P times E raised to the R, T. And so your rate turns out it's in the exponent with your uh, with your time there and the other thing is the base you know on that other one the base changes depending upon the rate and the number of compoundings but continuous compounding the base is e so this is one example of the natural base where the natural base occurs it's in this uh, continuous compounding problem <clears throat> so yeah but that's I mean, it's the same basically the same deal um, if 5,000 is compounded uh, continuously uh, with rate, uh, let's go 2.5 percent. <clears throat> How much is in the account? After Ten years. Uh, let's do twelve years. After twelve years. Yeah. So the key words you're looking for here are the compounding continuously because we have two formulas now. P times one plus R over n nt power, and then A equals pert P e to R t. Yeah. And so. <clears throat> Those are the key words that you clue in on that you use the uh, PERT formula there. Um, <clears throat> and so A here, we've got uh, 5,000 is the P, right? Now we start with. Then we have E to the RT. Well, the rate is 2.5%, and so what goes in for R there? Point zero two five. Yeah, you got to move it two places back. Even though you've got a decimal there, you still got to move it two places back. So the R would be point zero two five. And then the times the T, which is uh, which is twelve. So we just plug that in. Put that in to it there. <clears throat> Okay, 0 0.2025 times 12. So this is going to be e to the 0 0.3 power. Multiply those two together, you get 0.3. So it's 5,000 times e to the 0.3. That's $6,749.29. Another, another way uh, we'll see this phrase, kind of the same, very same idea, is um, it's called exponential growth or decay. <clears throat> another version 
where uh, base E can be used for uh, something that occurs naturally. <clears throat> it's uh, a lot of times with population growth, whether it's uh, bacteria population or people figuring out population for uh, city growth of cities or something like that. They usually grow exponentially or decay, uh, decline exponentially. <clears throat> um, yeah, and you can probably guess how do you know if it's growth or it's decay. Well, if I've got, say, a population um, so the population time t is given by, uh, let's make it 3,000 e to the 0 0.012 t. <clears throat> All right, so that's population after time t of a city. after two years. Well, <clears throat> yeah, so it's, this is an exponential growth model because this population be growing, how do I know it's growing? Because it's 3,000. Mm. It's a positive number. You got positive where? In the exponent. In the exponent, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, if you think about it, this is a positive exponent and we didn't do any that had a number in front of it. We just did like e to the t or e to the x. But uh, same, same idea. If you've got a positive number here, then you're, you're talking about growth. It's a, because the exponential, think about the graph, it's an increasing graph, OK? So this would be an increasing graph. The shape of it would be an increasing function. And so this is, this is growth, OK? <clears throat> Because of your yeah your exponent and uh, I'm more to say here, but uh, yeah, positive in the exponent. If you have the negative uh, three thousand e to the negative zero point zero zero five t. Um, <clears throat> that would be decay. Exponential decay. Yeah, it's all, it's really all based on that number because that tells you decline, decline, decreasing graph or increasing graph. Yeah, that's where that's going to tell you that. So anyway, same, very same idea right now anyway, what, they're, what they'd have you do. So let's say um, <clears throat> uh, what would the, so for this one, what would the population be in uh, seven years? <clears throat> That'll be P7, uh, 3,000 times E to the negative 0 0.005 times 7, 0 0.35, 0 0.035. 3,000 times e to the negative 0 0.035, right? Yeah, 2896.81, and so round that off to the nearest, uh, yeah. And so that, that confirms there it is decreasing, uh, well, I know, it. okay, so I, I didn't mention that. What, what did this population start out at, at time zero? 3,000. It'd be 3,000, right. <clears throat> so at time zero, t equals zero, we have 3,000 e to the negative 0 0.005 times zero. Well, that's going to make that 3,000 times e to the zero, right, which is 3,000. So yeah, this this number right here, that's that's the number you start with, three, the three thousand. That just like on the uh, compounding stuff, that number is the, the number that you start with, or, or is it times zero? So anyway, any uh, questions on that? Because I'll have some other problems on that later to come.
On the, on the broker to clay, um, is there an actual uh, formula like you have on the other two of them? Um, no? it, it, it's this basic. I mean, it would be, okay. uh, if you wanted a general formula, P of T equals um, 3,000 E to the RT. So it's, oh, sorry. Uh, let's call it P0. Because that's your population at time zero. Um, yep. All right. <laughs>